Welcome to this week's presentation on the UK's cultural quarter and cultural industry development. My name is Norman and I'm a reader in marketing at the University of Westminster. Uh, the title of today's presentation is Visiting Experts in the Field. Our project is funded by the British Academy and the Ministry of Science and Technology from Taiwan. In today's presentation, well, I'm going to uh, start with an overview of our project team members and what we're doing now and I'll focus most of the time on the detour that we have took in the past month and what happened why it happened who contributed this sort of question and I'll close the presentation with the question of well what did we learn through this experience this presentation is part of my British Academy and Ministry of Science and Technology co-funded project um, a comparative study on the consumption behavior of the UK's and Taiwan's cultural quarter visitors. Uh, the funding scheme was the International Partnership and Mobility Scheme. Uh, the collaborators are Professor Kwong Pong Hong, Hong Kwong Pong from Ming Chuan University, Taiwan, and Professor Annie Chen from the University of West London. And as I said earlier, my name is Norman. I'm a reader in marketing at the University of Westminster. So what happened last month was a little bit unscheduled and unplanned. Therefore, I think it's important to give you a little bit of context of, uh, of the background information. Well, when Guangpeng, Annie, and I uh, wrote our proposals, I mean, we wanted to focus on UK's in the cultural quarters and cultural industries. In particular, we, f we say that we are focusing on Manchester's Northern Quarter, Sheffield's Cultural Industry Quarter, and Birmingham, Birmingham's Jewelry Quarters. But in my mind, I always wanted to do something that is related to London. Uh, one of the reasons is what well, the, the three cultural quarters I mentioned, I mean, they have been around for 20, 30 years, or for some for longer. And I wanted to do something that is more current, that is still being developed. But I didn't put that in because, I mean, at the time, I, I'm not so sure what I wanted to do and how I can achieve uh, my objective. So that wasn't in. Uh, the proposal, but that was always in my mind. And very luckily, I mean, we had the opportunity to speak to someone, uh, some experts in the field who were based in London, who were conducting projects, uh, uh, try to regenerate part of the London. So that's why um, we gave, we visited these scholars, practitioners, and interviewed them, talked to them uh, to get the idea of what's going on. I think it made our project a lot more attractive, a lot more interesting, and perhaps a lot more uh, useful than what we originally pr pr proposed. So, well, why did I want to study London? Well, first of all, I spend most of my time in London um, uh, to, to live and to work, and I always know that the, some part of the London, especially uh, in the old days, I mean, the eastern part of London, is less desirable. I mean, it's, I mean, it's, uh, the stereotypes, impression, whatever you want to call it, uh, back in the days. And there are some truths to it, and then, of course, there are some bias uh, into it. And I also know that through the 2012 uh, Olympic, uh, London Olympics, that part of the town has been regenerated. I mean, that's just, that has been covered by the media, that has been covered by uh, the government. And I really want to see what's going on. I really want to know more about it. That's why I kind of drag my... Uh, collaborators into this kind of trip, this un unplanned, unscheduled trip. And this is uh, a photo uh, provided by the London Legacy Development Corporations. And uh, that's London, eastern part of London, before um, two decades ago. And this is the part of the Queen Elizabeth Olympic Park that, has, that is undergoing uh, some building, uh, building works. Um, you can see the stadium from uh, in the picture. That that's the uh, Olympic Stadium, part one of one of the stadiums, and it is now being converted into a football pitch, and that can be used uh, as a concert hall. So you can see the transformation. And this is another view from the Olympic Park. I, mean, I think this part, this part of the park, is I say I think it's eighty percent complete. This used to be the swimming pool for the Olympic Games. But now it's, it has been converted into a leisure center for uh, the community. And you can see uh, the transformation. It used to be a very, uh, not very desirable place. And some of the part, some part of the park has been turned into something that is quite new, quite uh, modern 
and then some of the part part is still being developed. So you can see that's why I always wanted to study this part of the town and how you contribute to uh, the development of cultural industry and cultural quarters. Although I always wanted to research East London and uh, cultural industry and cultural quarter development in London, but um, I think Taiwan representative office or Taiwan embassies in London had done us a great favor. I mean, they help us when they know about our project, when they contacted us, they, they wanted to contribute. I mean, they help us to set up some uh, interviews with practitioners and academics. So I, mean, I really want to thank them for their contribution. I'll talk more about it later in the presentation. And one of the interviews they help us to set up is with the Institute of Creative and Cultural Entrepreneurship from uh, Goldsmiths University of London. In particular, I mean, we get the opportunity to speak to uh, Director G uh, Gerald Listone and Professor uh, Mike Michael Hitchcock. Um, they both work in the center, and then they they were very very helpful. They're very enthusiastic, and they're expert in the field. They know a lot a lot of, a lot of culture industry and cultural quarter developments, uh, not only in London but also in, for example, in Asia as well in uh, Central and Eastern Europe. So. Talking to them, speaking to them, um, it gave us a really good idea of what's going on. And apart from um, the cultural quarter, cultural industries uh, itself, we also discussed uh, the teaching, the education aspect of uh, cultural industry and cultural quarters, um, in, in how it contributes to our curriculum and how the UK University are doing in terms of providing students with relevant knowledge as well as uh, practices on developing their skill in this area. So I mean that was that was incredible. And of course, I mean that was my first time uh, to visit Goldsmiths. I mean I graduated from the University of London and Royal Holloway, but I always wanted to go see Goldsmiths and that's kind of a bonus uh, for me. And when I spoke to the Taiwan representative office, I, I particularly mentioned that I want to know more about the Olympic parks. Uh, the Queen Elizabeth Olympic Park. So uh, they took the initiatives and when they contact the, the company, the corporations that uh, is responsible for this project, uh, the London Legacy Development Corporations. So we visit uh, uh, Stratford and then we, we got to speak to uh, the both directors, the project director and the director of design on how on, on the different aspect of this project. and I, Particularly, we look at the history, the present, and the future uh, issues. And also, we, they, they were very um, helpful. I mean, they talk, tell us about the difficulties they face, the opportunities, the changing climate, the changing uh, political landscape, how this is affecting them. And also, we, we touched on the issues of regeneration. And, and um, perhaps most importantly, we talk about how educational institutions and uh, cultural institutions are helping this part of the town to regenerate. So I mean, when it is regenerated, it's not going to. It's not only uh, to become a lot of flat, a lot of houses, but it is going to be an area that people enjoy living in. They can participate in different kind of cultural activities um, when they live here. I mean, they can participate in different uh, leisure activities. So. It, it in a way, I mean, it is it is quite an eye opening experience. I mean, London. I don't think we have a lot of similar ex ex examples that we can uh, we can we can look at. So it, it is definitely uh, quite useful, and I mean um, I super uh, appreciate that that these two gentlemen, Greg and Peter, they spend their valuable time and energies to 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 well, to talk to us and to to in a way to educate us, um, uh, to narrow the gaps between what we know from the books, what we know from the literatures, and then into a practice. Uh, into practice, so that's uh, an eye opening. And after visiting Goldsmiths and LDC, Annie uh, Wang Pong and I, we went back to Taiwan's embassy to report our findings and then to exchange ideas with our government officials. Uh, and of course, the, the the embassy was as welcoming as uh, as usual. We talked to Guo uh, Keyan Zhu Zhang, Lai Xiu Ru Zhu Zhang, Sun Shu Rong Xiao, Mi Shu, and and we talked to these people and then to exchange ideas and because in Taiwan as I said probably before um, 
we also want to develop our cultural industry. We want to export our, our cultural products. And so they were very, very keen to know what, what the UK has done, what we think has gone right, and what we think can be improved. And of course, I mean, it, it is hard to say that we, we have some um, big decision, I mean, happening in one meeting because that, was, that wasn't the case. But I think we, it, it is a good starting point. We recognize, well, part of the UK's model can be used in Taiwan. But I mean, there are a lot of contextual issues, contextual differences that needs to be considered. And also, I mean, it's about the, the, the industry, the healthiness of the industry, and also the mindset of, of, of the citizens uh, that needs to be, be aware of these issues. And of course, I mean, it was um, very, very useful. But I hope that we will have more opportunity to exchange ideas with our government officials and diplomats um, and to contribute to the development of Taiwan's cultural industry and cultural products um, in that sense. So that was that, that was pr pretty much what we have done last month. And it was, as I say, it's a little bit unexpected, but very useful. So to summarize, I mean, what did we learn through this detour, unexpected uh, visits? Well, first of all, what they realize is that it can this process of turning an area into a cultural industry, a cultural quarter, can take very long process, take a very long time, even with government support. Uh, LLDC said, I mean, in order to turn that area into a, a more desirable place, it will probably take, uh, if without government's uh, full, full support, it will take probably 30, 40 years or even longer. Even with government support, it still takes 10, 15 years. So it is a very long process. So ta what Taiwan needs to think about is, well, so far, most of our cultural quarter are heavily influenced, uh, heavily supported by government. Is it the best way forward? Or well, is it better to let some cultural quarters to grow organically? I mean, the government provide infrastructures, provide uh, the, the, the basic uh, electricity, uh, broadband, and th these basic things, and then leave it alone and let things develop on its own and see how it happens. And the, the third issue is, is that, well, beauty in the eyes of beholder. Well, this is another thing that I have talked about, that we talked about. And mo most of our interviewees told us about the beauty of this park, the beauty of uh, London's cultural quarters, the beauty of cultural industry. But on another occasion, which is not part of this interview, but on another occasion, I spoke to uh, someone with an art background, with a city planning background, and more of a uh, more of a aesthetic sense. And he disagreed. Uh, he disagreed on multiple grounds. Uh, one of the issues that he argued is that you. Some of the area, although used to be undesirable, it has characteristics. But with this change, with this government interventions, with this um, government support, all the, these cultural quarters, all these cultural sites have become more or less the same. If, if he felt that it is mass produced product. Of course, I mean, that wasn't part of the formal interview. So uh, I think, I mean, it is a topic that worth further exploring, and, but probably. Uh, we will have to do it in, on another occasion in, in a more formal interview uh, setting. But that's definitely something uh, quite uh, that caught my attention. And the last thing is that while well, we talked about a lot about regeneration, but one topic that hasn't really been touched upon, and which is probably uh, something that we need to do in the future, is that how can this cultural quarter promote equality? Or is it creating inequality in itself? I mean, the, that's the, the question that uh, we didn't spend a lot of time uh, to explore, but we should have, we should have. But given the time constraint, that's uh, what we could do on this three uh, occasion. So hopefully in the future, we will be able to do more on these issues. So thank you once again. Thank you for spending time to listen to this uh, audio. And we hope that we will see you again very, very soon. Thank you very much.